Did you ever hear this while growing up? Just go to school. Get good grades so you can get a secure and well-paid job. I bet that 95% of you have been raised to believe that this is the road to financial success. I know that I was. And this path might be the most suitable for some people, but definitely not for everyone. In Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant, Robert Kiyosaki explains that there are four different paths to become wealthy, but some of them are more efficient than others. Takeaway number one, the cash flow quadrant. The cash flow quadrant is a simple model that explains that wealth can come from four different sources. Which quadrant you belong to depends on where most of your income comes from. The four different quadrants are E, the employee, S, the small business owner or self-employed, B, the big business owner, and I, the investor. The employee strives for security. He achieves financial success by climbing the corporate ladder. And you might find him say something like, I'm looking for a secure job with nice colleagues and great benefits. The small business owner or self-employed, on the other hand, strives for control. He achieves financial success by becoming highly specialized in a demanding field. And you might find him say something like, I'm looking for a job where I can be compensated well for my skills and time, where I am in charge. The big business owner strives for freedom. He achieves financial success by creating a profitable business system. And you might hear him say something like, I'm looking for people that are smarter than me to run my business for me. The investor also strives for freedom, but... He does this through allocating money to where it has the highest expected return. You might hear him say something like, I'm looking for a place where my money can work for me in the most profitable way possible. Takeaway number two, OPT and OPM. The number one difference between the left side of the cash flow quadrant and the right side is OPT and OPM. OPT stands for other people's time and OPM for other people's money. A person from the B quadrant uses OPT and OPM when he is designing a business system where he can hire people from the E and S quadrants while using money from people of the I quadrant. Typically, he also invests a lot of his own time to kickstart the business, but in the long run, this is not essential and becoming a more passive owner of the business is possible. A person from the I quadrant uses OPT to generate income from his money alone. And if he's skilled enough, he can typically apply other people's money as well as his own money to scale his investment profits. Herein lies the big difference. People from the E and S quadrants never get to use OPT or OPM. Therefore, the more successful they become in their quadrants, the more money they make, but at the same time, their workload increases. Takeaway number three, the pros and cons of the quadrants. E, the employee. Pros, reduced financial uncertainty, paid vacation, health insurance and other benefits, and colleagues. Cons, success means more work and less free time. Your performance is often higher than your salary, if you are not a slacker, that is. And colleagues, especially bosses. S. The small business owner or self-employed. Pros. You are your own boss. You're paid according to performance. Cons. Success means more work and less free time. And financial uncertainty. You might lose money on this. B. The big business owner. Pros. OPT and OPM. Financial freedom can be achieved very quickly. And a greater portion of your profits goes to you. In other words, you pay less tax. Cons. Financial uncertainty. You might lose money. It requires a different set of skills than what school teaches. And you'll have to manage people. I. The investor. Pros. OPT and OPM. Financial freedom can be achieved quickly. A greater portion of your profits goes to you. In other words, less tax and it can be passive. Cons. Financial uncertainty. You might lose money. Takeaway number four. Breaking the addiction. Moving to the right side. So, 
There are pros and cons with all the quadrants, but the right side is where financial freedom can be achieved the fastest. Therefore, we might ask ourselves, how can we move to this side? Money has an addictive power, much like sex or drugs. Therefore, when you earn money through a specific quadrant, you'll be addicted to that quadrant. If you earn money as an employee for a large company, for instance, your brain will associate that type of work with a cash reward. Switching from one quadrant to another becomes more difficult because of this. Moreover, if you've been raised in a family where degrees, job security, paid vacation and governmental pension has been highly valued, you might have a difficult transition to make. Here are some potential mental obstacles for the conversion. Ah, oh, you're taking too many risks. You might fail. Money can't buy happiness anyways. As if this wasn't enough, our educational system is built so that it rewards those who make the least number of mistakes and punishes those who make the most. In the B and I quadrants, you must act in the complete opposite way. People who take action will also make the most mistakes, but in the long run, these people will learn more and achieve more as business owners and or investors. Thomas Edison was criticized for making 1014 mistakes before creating the electric light bulb. In response, he said, I did not fail 1014 times. I successfully found out what did not work 1014 times. The transition won't be easy, but a great start is to surround yourself with people who have made the journey before and learn from those that are already successful in the B and I quadrants. Takeaway number five, the five levels of investors. According to Robert Kiyosaki, there are five different levels of investors. Starting from the bottom, we have one, the zero financial intelligence level. At this level, we have the people who have nothing to invest at all. Each month, their expenses are higher than their income, often because they forget to pay themselves first, which is the most fundamental strategy for wealth building taught in the classic The Richest Man in Babylon. 2. The savers are losers level. Placing hard-earned money under a mattress or in a low-interest bank account will put you in the top 50% of people financially, but that doesn't mean that it's a solid personal finance plan. Why? Because of inflation. Between 1980 and 2017, the value of the Swedish crown was reduced by 69%, for instance. 3. The I'm too busy level. A lot of people are simply too busy with their careers, family, friends and vacations to dedicate time to investing. They therefore hand over their money to someone else to do it. The problem with this approach is that such a person will never learn how to invest. 4. The I'm a professional level. This is the do-it-yourself investor. He uses his own money and takes his own decisions. He is educating himself in the subject but hasn't evolved to the last level yet. As you are watching this channel, I expect that you already are at this level, or higher, or that your intentions are to get here. 5. The capitalist level. This is an investor who comes from the B quadrant and has learned how to use the concepts from there in his investing. For example, he is not investing alone. He has advisors that help him gather information about the markets and in that using OPT. Furthermore, he uses OPM as well as his own money. He has also learned how to use corporations to reduce taxation levels of his capital gains. The level 5 investor is the person who will reach financial freedom first among all of the investors. What level of investor are you? Here's the recap. There are four different roads to financial success. You may succeed as the employee, the self-employed, the business owner and or the investor. The right side of the cash flow quadrant uses OPT and OPM. There are pros and cons with each of the quadrants, and depending on your personality and goals in life, one might be more suitable than the others. If you wish to move to the B and I quadrants, you must learn to accept risks, make mistakes, and surround yourself with others that have achieved what you wish to do. There are five levels of investors, and the greatest profits goes to the level five investor, who has learned how to implement business concepts in his investing approach. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.